my wife was driving, all night when I was driving, I was taking each of my children before the Lord, and I was singing the Gaither song, Fully Alive, and Then Came the Morning. Those two songs were on a brand new cassette back then, in 84. And uh, I'll tell you, my life was filled with the presence of God in that van. And I laid down on that seat behind to go to sleep. My wife had been driving, and that's when she went off the road and we crashed. But uh, I was in the presence of God all night long. So people say, well, if, if you'd have been in the obedience with the Lord, that wouldn't have happened. I said, you don't know what obedience is. Right, and i got to tell you that. That's that religious spirit, you know, that oh. uh, uh -huh, the Lord God of heaven rebuke it. Because, I mean... All you'd have to do is read my email to see, you know, a massive portrayal of that. Mm, you know, you it's, it's, it's amazing, though, Henry, and, and again, if you would, I think people need to understand that you were in a catastrophic car wreck, yeah. and you are dead, but instantly. You went, you were in the presence of the Lord, worshiping God, even while asleep. You then are brought into the presence, literally, and God then honors a prayer that you had prayed. Wasn't it as a small child under the truck? I think that's critical that you that's share right. that. That's right. I want you to I want you to share how that blew me away when you told me that I went whoa. All right. I was in a Baptist church. I was in Skyway Baptist Church that is now called Skyway West Church of the Valley. This could be verified through the, the pastor, who at that time was was associate pastor, Greg Brown of Skyway Baptist Church, uh, Skyway West Church of the Valley. Now it was called Skyway. It was a Southern Baptist Church back then. I was speaking on a Wednesday night, and it was nothing, no testimony about any death experience, a typical Baptist, Southern Baptist evangelical sermon, okay? When all of a sudden, I'm, I'm about ready to give the altar call, but all of a sudden it's like the Lord walked up behind me, and he spoke these words. He said, I thought I would just let you pass through the heavens before I roll them up as a scroll and throw them away and create all new. Wow. Instantaneously when he said that to me, it's like he did an instant playback of when I was seven years old. The Sunday school teacher had taught that very thing on a flannel graph. Howard Pittman was the man that, that died. I was trying to think of his name. I remember Howard Pittman. Howard Pittman now. Reading his book. Would, yeah, if you ever get a chance to hear his testimony, it's very similar to mine in, in the death experience. But anyhow... Uh, the Lord took me right back, right back to when I was seven years old, up under the axle of my dad's camping trailer. It was, a, it was one of the first camping trailers built out of an old Buick touring car axle assembly, which is, had the great big iron wheels. They weren't spoke wheels, they were iron wheels. The old Buick, I think it was probably a, like a 27 Buick touring car that he had. He made into a camping trailer. Anyhow... My elbows were resting on the axle underneath that. I was hiding when I was seven years old, away from my sister and brothers who were playing while Mother was fixing the Sunday lunch and putting it on. Uh, and I had my elbows under there, and I said, Jesus, I believe what the Sunday school teacher, what she taught this morning, but I only have one question. Now, I'm seven years old asking this. When you... When you roll up the heavens and throw them away and create new ones. Now, she taught that you took them and formed them with your hands and then your fingers put them out there in place. Could I stand beside you when you put the new heavens and new earth in place? I want to I wanna stand and watch you. That's what he let me see and hear, my little seven-year-old body, hear my seven-year-old voice. Now, what would you do if you were in front of people preaching, and all of a sudden, it's like the Lord just steps up behind and says, I, I thought I'd let you see this before I roll them up like a scroll, and then shows you a playback of your seven-year-old body petitioning heaven. I broke sobbing so hard, and as I was sobbing, I couldn't talk, and I just said, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't speak. And I was sobbing, I just laid my head on the pulpit, weeping. And when I stood up, those dear Baptist people were all, men, women, and children, were all up front weeping and sobbing as well. They didn't even know what I saw. I hadn't had a chance to tell them yet. 
But that was the Spirit of God that was so present and so precious in that Baptist church at that time in 1985, one year after the accident. So God is, God is so sensitive. He's so wonderful. To keep perfect records, people, I want to tell you, he keeps wonderful records. Now, if you don't mind, we'll jump forward or we're not going to get it done. Absolutely. You go where the Lord is. All right. Four years forward, I've, I've completed seven years then. I've completed some years of walking and praying in Eastern Europe and in Europe. And I've come back to report to my intercessors in Portland, Oregon, up on LAD. And uh, that dear... Dear lady now is with the Lord, that, whose house I was in then. But uh, the average age, I would say, in that room, other than my wife and I, the average age was probably 75 years old, my intercessors. These were aching bones people that God raised up and had me ask them if they would give me their aching bones time to pray for me while I walked overseas. And so here were 25, 26 of them. And my wife was playing her auto harp, a new song the Lord gave her. And we were about to just kind of sing for a few minutes before I would share my testimony of, of what they had been a part of by interceding for me. When all of a sudden my eyes were closed, I was looking up and singing the song with her. When all of a sudden I thought somebody put a spotlight on in front of us, and I opened my eyes and looked, and coming through the ceiling was the glory of God. A golden cloud just came right through the ceiling into that room. I immediately hit the deck. The second my knees hit the floor, I was literally taking a step on the street of gold in heaven. This was wow. October the 22nd, 1988. Now, there were some strange things that went on in 88, like 88 reasons why the Lord will come in 88 and all that kind of stuff, which obviously was false. But... Uh, that was October 22nd, 1988, at about 10:15 at in the morning. I hit the deck and my knees, and the second my knees hit the floor, I was walking the street of gold. I was looking up the street of gold and realized instantaneously I was on the street of gold, and I looked down, and the, 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 the glass, the, the gold was like crystal clear, only like if you take a... A cherry 7-Up bottle. I, I was at a grocery store with a wife once and looked up at a light behind a, a two-liter of cherry 7-Up up on the top shelf. I pulled her back and said, look through that. You see that cherry color, that clear cherry color? And she says, yeah. I said, that's what the street of gold looks like when you look straight down through it. It goes forever. It's unending. But you look up it, it's as beautiful a gold as you'll ever see. Now, because I looked down and it looked transparent, I pulled my foot back thinking I would fall through. Instead, I realized my left foot was on the gold. It was solid. And then I started walking. Now, I want to go ahead to, to what I saw that really got my attention. I saw a person walking ahead of me in white raiment. And that white raiment was the most beautiful I have ever seen. I have never seen white raiment, so white so beautiful. And, uh, you know, in Revelation chapter 3, the Lord is saying to the Laodicean church, the last of the seven churches, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire and white raiment, right? Gold that you might be rich and white raiment that the shame of your nakedness does not appear. Isn't it interesting that God would say that in this third chapter of Revelation? And uh, white raiment, gold and white raiment, those two things. Then he says, verse 21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my, in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And that's the end of chapter 3. I just quoted to you there verse 18. And uh, so that white raiment, I want to talk about that because I want to tell you something. That white raiment is so beautiful. If you stop and think, we go all the way back the last time that it's talking about raiment 
the first time in the Bible it's talked about 